I welcome you all on this Moksh Academy a PG Career Series session. In this COVID world, have to you know conduct these online sessions. Uh, but traditionally, we have been you know training students for the USMLE and the licensing examinations, and for the you know informative uh, you know awareness, we used to actually do uh, in-person sessions across India. So you know thanks to COVID, now we are completely online. But yes, uh, happy to help you in this entire uh, journey. All right. So I'm your host today, uh, Chirag, and I'm going to you know run through this entire conversation today with our guest. Uh, today's session is something kind of an insider info, or you know, a kind of a, a glimpse to what exactly is a journey of somebody just like you in a medical school in India. How did he actually, you know, overcome uh, possible obstacles? So we are proud and, uh, you know, happy to have uh, somebody uh, from your fraternity, uh, Dr. Jinendra Lalit Satya. He is very much from Bombay. He completed his MBBS from the prestigious uh, Grand Medical College, uh, JJ Group of Hospitals. So just like you, you know, he had his dream to, you know, pursue a U.S. residency. He further went on to do his MD in internal medicine from University of Miami, subsequently moved to NYC where he is a chief medical resident for New York Medical College. And currently he is pursuing his advanced hepatology fellowship at the prestigious Beth Israel Tikonis Medical Center, a teaching hospital of the Harvard Medical School in Boston. His interest includes medical education, hepatology, and gastroenterology. So I welcome uh, Dr. Satya on behalf of the entire student community. So thank you very much, uh, doctor, to be part of this session. Any opening remarks, you know, before we start this power pack questions uh, for you? Thanks so much, Virag. It's a pleasure to be here and talk to young students and uh, hopefully provide them uh, insight and answer questions which uh, can be useful to them in their uh, decisions uh, along this uh, long but rewarding journey let's talk about the next level you know students just for your information uh, there are hierarchies in which you know uh, medical school actually uh, system works in us uh, you have your medical student then you have a pgy1 that is your intern year then you do a residency that's two to seven years uh, you get into fellowship and then you become an attending physician uh, so with us today, Dr. Uh, Jinendra Satya, he is already a PG Wi-Fi a fifth year fellow with us. So uh, we have an opportunity to, you know, talk a uh, few things which are next level with him as well, because he's seen not one, but two math cycles. He got selected for a residency and now also for fellowships. So for many of you, these might be very, very new terms. Please, there is a sincere request. Uh, we do a regular USMLE webinars very regularly every week please attend that so your basic doubts of what is a personal statement what is usmle what is match everything will be sorted all right so please make a note in fact uh, we have informed our team a lot of these faqs uh, which are very generic in nature we will be answering uh, the team is already noting it down and we'll be uh, definitely picking up you know for our usmle uh, sessions as well all right, uh, over to you, doctor. How difficult or easy is uh, fellowship admissions compared to residency? Yeah, I think I think that's a, that's a very good question. Um, so, you know, it's a lot of information that everyone is already learning about residency. And it's important to know that fellowship is a totally different ballgame, uh, you know, very different in terms of the competition, the number of interviews you will get, and how strong your application needs to be. So everyone needs to understand that you know, coming out from medical school, there are only a certain number of people that get into residency. And then out of that, only a few certain that get into fellowship. So if you think about it as a bottleneck, it gets narrower and narrower and the competition gets more stiffer and stiffer as you move forward. So, you know, getting a fellowship is very difficult. You know, of course, depending on what that person's interest is in terms of specialty, uh, it may or may not be easier to get. But fellowship, uh, applications are definitely more competitive, a lot more focus on research. So no one really can get into a fellowship like they get into residency without any research. Like if you have not done any research 
in the specialty you want. Unfortunately, in the United States, you cannot get into a fellowship. Whereas compared to India, if I remember correctly, it's still an examination and a score that gets you the super specialty that you want, which is good if that's what you like. Uh, for some people, that may work better. Uh, some people have better test taking skills, and that may be the route for them. Uh, for fellowship in the United States, uh, you need to work a lot harder. And then when you're when you're a resident, everyone will realize how difficult, how busy you are to begin with. And to be able to do research when you're busy, let's say you're doing a night call or ICU uh, month, it's very it's very difficult to do your research. You know, you have to spend your nights, you have to spend your weekends to do research. Um, so to get fellowship, you know, it's something that you should really want and you have to be motivated enough to be able to continue to work in that specialty. Um, so to summarize, you know, it, fellowship is a very different application. You don't get nowhere near the number of same interviews that you will get uh, compared to residency. So that's a comparison that people should not make. Um, as with residency, with fellowship, you need one interview to match. And of course, you know, all of us are on a visa. So that also makes it more difficult for a fellowship uh, as an IMG. And if it's a comparative specialty, you know, that makes it uh, more difficult. So, you know, a lot of other things that need to be worked on for fellowship compared to just residency admissions. Perfect, perfect. Because these insights are actually really important uh, for many of the students who are, you know, planning long term, you know, uh, aiming right up to cardiology or nephrology or cardiothoracic surgery. So next question, of course, is how different are the important requirements for fellowship admission compared to residency? You've already uh, specified research uh, being one. So I would just want to add a part of it, you know, what factors are important and does USMLE scores can or do they play any role in the admissions? Yes, so as I said, research is very important. Uh, and to be able to do good productive research, meaningful research, you know, all of us start with doing small case reports, but you, what you really need for fellowship is full papers, manuscripts, where you are the first author, ideally. Um, and if you've had the chance to work with some well-known people who are well-known in the specialty that you're working, that you're aiming for, that helps you. Um, so you need to get at least one or two first author publications in a big, well-known journal that's ideally on PubMed. So what I would like to focus on for a brief second is when some of us may have already done research and sometimes you wonder where should I submit this article? Like what's a good journal to submit to? So cost is, is a factor because not all journals are free. Um, so I would say when you're thinking about where to submit my paper, you should look for a PubMed index journal and a journal that may be free of cost. So there are certain journals that don't charge you for case reports where some will charge you $1,000 for a case report, that's not worth it. Um, so you ideally want your publication to be on PubMed because believe it or not, some faculty may actually look you up on PubMed if, you're, if they're interviewing you to see if you've done some good research. So if your article is on PubMed, that means it's in a good, decent journal. It's in a well-known journal and you can actually put that on your CV. And uh, when you actually fill out the, the ERAS application, there's, there's a, a section with, which asks you for publications and then asks you for a PubMed ID. So if that's something you have, you know, it really helps because they can just Google the PubMed ID and see your full article, which, uh, which augurs well for you. Um, going back to Chirak's question, I don't think scores matter so much. Of course, you need to have good scores. And as I already mentioned, step three is now pass and fail. So that's more of a checklist rather than something that uh, anyone will look at. Um, so, and some programs may do this differently, but for the most part, they don't focus on scores. What they want to see is what you've done in residency, why you want to do this fellowship in terms of your interest in your CV with the things you've done and the kind of people you worked with and the kind of people who can vouch for you.